Yeah. Okay, wait, let's dive just in. Um, so, yeah, here it is. Um, as you can see, this is today's topic, game audio, the good, the bad, and the perfect. And um, yeah, we're going to talk uh, once again about game audio from marketer's perspective uh, to um, like, we're going to talk about it, like, you know, a tool that can provide your game like something good. But uh, what I want to start uh, today with is that, um, like this idea, this following idea to which all my today's speech can be like really, really simply reduced to. So bad audio can ruin your game. Uh, good functional audio is a must have and a practical wrapper for your game product. And only a well thought out and a bold audio decision can take your game to a whole new level. And that's it, this is the whole idea, which like, but we're going to see it like, you know, in the details, and uh, let's start with this really, once again, obvious thing is that audio is one of the main game elements. And um, why one is in bold? Because, um, you know, there are a lot of them and the game is a complex system and audio is important thing in it, but it's only one thing in this whole system. But from like, like in marketing language, Audio is one of the main uh, product's characteristic. And uh, this means that audio indeed influences the way like the player percept your product. And uh, the tricky part in all of this is to understand how like much influence audio actually has on like on the players. And uh, you know, someone like John Williams uh, like says that it's like, 50% of impression, of the overall impression. Kajima-san talks about 60 to 70% of impression and some casual game producers in, like don't believe that it's an essential part after all. And you know, I, I understand that it's hard to find only correct answer because like everyone is kind of right in like in uh, their own manner because you know for different projects audio has like different level of you know necessity and uh, level of influence but um i don't like to make you know assumptions i like to rely on facts and the facts are following um it's physically impossible to ignore the sound entirely. And there are rare exceptions, you know, like, you know, the bodies that um, don't act and don't work as they should. You know, sometimes our brain shuts down certain noises, certain sounds, you know, just like the sound of our footsteps. You know, you barely hear them like on a daily basis, but when someone walks in, or when you're heading to the kitchen at 3 a.m. in the morning, you will hear those footsteps because you concentrate your uh, attention on them. But it's just like the fact that we always see our notice, you know, uh, but our brain just, you know, ignores them. Even when our brain ignore something, ignores something, um, it's, uh, it's still perceive and analyze information. And uh, the next fact is that brain process and analyze sound faster than any visual image or especially the text. And we are not talking, you know, about some like drastic difference because there are like thousands of milliseconds which can like appear really small numbers, but in, uh, in the way we perceive our world, it's really, important those thousands of milliseconds and uh, next fact i want to talk about is that pleasant repetitive sounds or music form a positive attitude towards a certain object or project or phenomenon and um, yeah the logic behind it it's really simple because you know uh, when something repeats like time after time our brain um, recognize this as something familiar 
and our brain likes familiar things because you know it needs like less energy to analyze it and uh, that's why uh, it decides that oh i like this thing and uh, when um, there is sound that associates with i don't know some commercial or product and this sound is pleasant um which means you know not harsh not sudden and loud you know which is not associated with danger but this pleasant sound uh, gives our brain an idea that uh, the subject or like object with uh, which it associated is also good. So yeah, knowing all of this, what we can imagine where like the person starts a game and there is like a bad sound. Like right away, this person's brain will process it and analyze much faster then the person will form an opinion about, you know, visual uh, or like, you know, text. And if it's not something good, like meaning, um, you know, harsh, as I said, or too loud, this like opinion, first um, impression, it will be spoiled. And yeah, I guess it's really a good timing to uh, understand what I mean by bad audio and uh, to show you this. I'm going to show you a small clip. And if you played like Red Dead Redemption 2, you will like really fast recognize this scene I'm about to show you all. But if you didn't play Red Dead Redemption 2, uh, it doesn't matter and no worries, you will get an idea either way. So yeah, we, uh, in this video, we changed, you know, we changed the audio. Uh, as if it was done, you know, badly, like um, maybe in a hurry or there wasn't like enough money or there weren't uh, like right specialists around or maybe <laughs> there wasn't even an intention to make something sound good. So yeah, let's take a look at it. Just a second. <laughs> to hear this one more time um, no it's not so bad but I'm really glad it ended because um, yeah you know I, I, I believe you could hear it for yourself but um, yeah what it was is terrible it, it was, was yeah. completely terrible <laughs> Yeah, you know, when I uh, asked Vlad, um, who is my partner, to, you know, to read this audio and uh, he loves, he just, he loves this game so much. And I asked him, you know, please take your favorite scene and did it in a bad way. And he was like, oh, no, I, I don't, I don't really want to do this. And I insisted, but he cannot you know, do this like in most horrible way because he loves the game. But yeah, I believe you could hear it, you know. Uh, and what is bad or non-functional audio is what, what it does. It, first of all, it doesn't fit the task or the setting or the market. And here, like in this example, it doesn't fit the market at all because the market of triple A like titles games uh, it doesn't sound like this, you know, there is a golden standard of sound and it's not it. It kind of fits the setting, you know, because there is some like Western motifs and all this stuff, but it, once again, it doesn't fit the task because the task of this scene was to make uh, players feel emotions. <laughs> and this sound, it, it evokes like, you know, not, not those emotions, you know, developers would like to evoke. And um, next thing, like bad audio doesn't do, it doesn't sound right in terms of quality. And here, once again, as I 
was talking like a few minutes ago, there, there are some over compressed sounds and there are some sudden cuttings, you know, and in general, it, it sometimes it makes you go like, ah, please stop. It makes you, your ears bleed, you know. And the next thing, like bad audio is poorly implemented in the project. And once again, in this very example, uh, the loudness balance isn't there at all. And uh, it really changed the way you perceive something. So yeah, what, once again, what bad audio really do or does and uh, why uh, it can ruin your game? Because it can spoil the impression about your game, like right away, the first impression, the, the most important one. And why, why it's so important? Because our brain, once it really formed uh, an impression and opinion, everything else now needs to convince it wrong. And uh, our brain, once again, don't, doesn't like to, you know, um, take some energy and put it in something like in some uh, action and to reform <laughs> an uh, impression, it's really hard for it to do. And, uh, you know, this bad sound will distract your player and will eventually make your product feel cheaper. And uh, this is the real th thing, because when I was like talking with um, some game producers, they even told me that, you know, when there, are, there isn't like enough budget on the project or uh, like no time, they at least make first sounds, you know, first minutes of the game, mobile game. We're talking about mobile game, not, not PC, not def definitely not console ones. But for mobile games, the first few minutes are essential to make a good impression with the sound. Because if the sound is bad at the very beginning, uh, the person will immediately feel like everything else is done on the very same level. And this is not what you want for your project. And while I was uh, preparing for this uh, webinar, I like um, read some forums like Reddit and uh, I read stories of players that like quit games because of how they sounded. And um, yeah, there were like a lot of them. I even like stopped counting, you know, at some point. And there were some even triple A titles but I need to really make it clear that now it's not the thing as I, uh, as I believe, because you know, now, as I said, AAA titles and especially console ones, console exclu exclusives, they have like at least good sound, like at least like golden standard sound or great one. And we're going to discuss it like in the next part. And for now, do you have some questions about this part about that audio can ruin your game thing, please let me know. I see. Uh, so I will start with the second one, if you don't mind. In which stage of the development do you suggest to start game audio development? I will talk about this like in the next, uh, like in the fourth part of the webinar. So uh, st stick with us till that time. We're going to talk about this. And uh, how do you best communicate these things with, to developers? Where do, start, do you start this time of conversation? Like, uh, first of all, it's a really good question. Um, like from our like experience, you know, uh, if people don't really, um, I, I, I will show you like this example. Uh, here in Ukraine on our market, um, there are not so many people like uh, who truly understand the power of like audio because because of the size of the projects because the small as I see the tendency the smaller the project is and the the least important it is to the developer um, they least care uh, they um, they um, like care about audio lesser you know and um, we try to educate our clients, you know, by showing some um, like examples, just like I showed you, you know, some good examples, some bad examples, and it's better to, you know, to give them some numbers because um, developers 
like they're mostly tech people and they think more more in numbers as we creative people we think in other categories they think by numbers and if you have some uh, great you know examples from the industry or or your uh, experience it's great if you have like your uh, your personal numbers like we did some we redid some design for some match tree game and um the developer showed us how like you know the retention changed by the time like we did like we redid sound design so it's a great like example to show to your clients and uh yeah so i suggest you uh to just talk in numbers and educate your clients by showing like best practices and not so great practice practices to compare them and um the next question is um what audio format do you think is best in terms of quality sites ah so what my partner he's in chat he's <laughs> in charge of all technical questions so feel free to ask him uh and if you don't mind we're going to to the next part of the webinar if it's okay with you start the good uh so good or functional audio what is this uh, we're going to understand this, I, I hope, <laughs> at least. And uh, for now, <laughs> brace yourself, because there are quite a few lists coming like ahead. So, yeah. Um, at the bare minimum, like, good sound, uh, good audio sounds right, <laughs> like, in terms of quality, once again. It's obvious, but, yeah, you know, there is no sudden cutting, no over-compressing, it's not some, you know, free sounds downloaded from like different places that sound like awful together. So good audio doesn't bother, you know, the, the player. Next thing, mm, good audio or functional one is correctly implemented. And yeah, we're not going to go really deep in this, but I, I had to mention this in this presentation because um you know there are people who do this for living like implementation part like audio implementation and they know it like the best you know of all the people of, of all the people and there are a lot of details and there are games with really complex like sonic systems in them and uh implementation there is like a huge huge work to do but if you don't have you know this uh, complex projects uh, you need to remember just one like just bare minimum of things that you need to configure right and what you need to pay attention to is loudness balance uh, as I showed you in example one really loud uh, uh, sound effect can ruin everything and then you need to really pay attention to frequencies balance the prioritizing of sounds playback randomization and transitions between sounds of events or modes because there is no like oh uh, it's really uh simple to make a mess you know if you just take all sound assets and just throw them into your project and then everything sound like like at the same very moment and it's just it's awful and it ruins everything so yeah a good audio is correctly implemented um next thing audio like this does is that it takes into account certain marketing stuff and uh that will be like which audio is accepted on the market first of all um is like from this example for Red Dead Redemption 2, it needs to take uh, into account how all the other AAA market sounds, uh, or, uh, you know, it can be um, linked to the geography, like, you know, um, the Japanese market uh, would sound like different from, I don't know, uh, European one or USA one. So you need to like to think about this while creating your audio. Also, uh, you need to understand how your competitors sound. Do their projects have bugs or poorly designed audio elements? Uh, yeah, you need this simply for, like, you know, go ahead of them on this point. 
and then what your audio good audio needs to think about is what uh, your audience likes to listen to because uh, you know like hardcore gamers they have like different like typically they have uh, different music taste as for like you know people who play casual games you know or maybe not even casual like you know simpler one because this is the case not always but you need to keep this in mind also and um, then uh, this is like really important one because you know functional audio has its name simply because it performs specific tasks because game audio is a tool to make something it's not there just for any any reason uh, it is there to perform like some task and uh, those tasks can be really different but i try to put together some like most common ones which are you know this audio could uh, reflect the game setting or provide information to a player because you know audio is has to be really informative in terms of games in some projects more than in the others and uh, then um audio can like set the atmosphere or the mood or describe the character the story like or the part of the narrative and also and this is more you know marketing thing but um, it can make your game memorizable and build up, you know, the right association. So yeah, here you have it. And uh, I believe, I believe that this level of audio is a must have simply because it can really help you to go ahead of your competitors. Because if you analyze the market and your competitors, you can gain some points, you know, and really go ahead and take all the advantage advantage of it and then uh from the other hand it will help you to like um, to make the player focus really focus on on your game because good audio you know some people even don't hear it is there you know it doesn't distract so people can really enjoy the visuals the text you know we don't believe in really background music or audio, but there is kind of such a thing. So yeah, good audio is a practical wrapper in which you wrap your product and give to your player. So yeah. And um, I, I, uh, we made an example, like again, using this very scene for, from Red Dead Redemption 2, but this time we made audio as if it, um, was done on this good functional level and like once again imagine like there wasn't like a right specialist behind it or like uh, there was no time again for this but there was a willing to to make something that is like okay to listen and that doesn't distract player from from the experience so just a second here you have it I see them clear Floating down the river Hanging from the tree Hide away from all we fear Holding her cold hand No one can understand except for me Get this part uh so yeah uh i once again <laughs> i believe you, you you heard the difference for yourself and um yeah we did this using like ready-made assets from libraries but uh yeah it's okay because it's more relevant now for the situation and uh although maybe there is no deep you know like deep uh, feelings in it it works with the picture so yeah here you have it a good wrapper for the product um and once again it's time for your questions i i will now go to the chat to see for myself and if you have some please 
please please ask me stars if you have something to say you are really welcome uh at this point i have nothing to say uh, despite that fact that the last video was truly amazing uh, it was uh, the sound was pretty much better than the previous one indeed and uh, i've never played this game before and seems like we we made the the thing that twitch is supposed to do uh, and we just stream a video of a gameplay so yeah. <laughs> here is uh, the fun fact that and i like it I, i i think that i have to just to spend few hours of my life maybe few days and play this game and try it uh, so, so yeah you will be this person uh because um we will have an original one original video from the game to see in some minutes but okay. uh, there will be major spoilers stuff so <laughs> you will have to mute me if you are afraid of them <laughs> okay uh, so, and we have a question uh yeah i see um you mentioned numbers what numbers have been most convincing for devs in your experience and how did you go about getting that data okay um as i mentioned uh one time we had the data provided by the dev uh himself but it was like <laughs> obviously confidential so we couldn't use uh this as it is you know for other uh people um but we could like reference it you know in terms like in general meaning but um if you don't have like like us for now we don't have a, a really like a possibility to conduct some you know um experiments with this because uh the tricky part is that no one really wants to uh you know explicitly um like open all the information about their games you know to to the to the market because everyone is kind of scared scared about this perspective but it's okay uh you can always uh search for like numbers like maybe revenue maybe you know uh how sound affected certain like game moments uh the time people spent in the game or something like this it's actually it's up to you because you can decide for yourself what you um, really see the most important audio can can give to the player and i really mean this because this is all kind of for us uh, we can build it on our uh, theories you know and you can search for it in the web there are some uh you know even the information about how many money like um game gained and what like did it have like an audio feature like an outstanding audio and we're going to talk about this in a second so yeah you can search for open data you know uh, i hoped i hope that i answered somewhat your question and the next you touched upon the question of sound design staying in the background and functioning as a rapper is there is also space in your opinion for sound that calls attention to itself or is it just a context sensitive kind of a thing um i believe we're going to talk about this right now but if i'm not like fully answering your question with my presentation we're going to go back to your question and yeah go like further in it and if it's okay with all of you i i will continue because we are about to um get familiar with the perfect sound so yeah okay uh yeah what can perfect audio give your game and now i need to to say something something that first of all uh perfect uh is not the term i like to to use mm. i simply used it like for a clickbait no it's like for the for the pretty title but uh, i believe in great audio existing and um sometimes great audio can be the perfect one for the game and i'm going to explain this like right now and uh but before we dive into that 
I want to talk about what makes like great perf like great audio well great. And so here it is. Like, like right now. Doesn't work. Just a second. Okay, here it is. Uh, so what can great audio do for your project is that it can affect the quality of the gaming experience and increase the time person would spend in your game. And this is, I, I believe that any one of you could really, um, you know, experience in your gamer life. Because uh, if, if, if you did, please feel free to share your experience in the chat about th that one game that made you stay in it just because of its music or sound design. And uh, for example, that I can tell you is that um, in our socials, like the production socials, we have a section where we talk about uh, some great um, soundtracks from films and games or animation. And like maybe, maybe about a month ago, we talked about Lineage 2 soundtrack. And uh, I was really pretty much overwhelmed because we do have some reactions sometime on our posts, but not this big reaction, you know? We got certain like direct messages from people and even I believe one comment and some comments on, you know, share posting and um, people were like talking that you know, they, they told us that um, back in the Lineage 2 days, they uh, used to go to a specific location and like spend hours there just to listen to the soundtrack. And uh, Vlad, uh, he actually, like he was this Lineage 2 person uh, and uh, his favorite theme is uh, the own theme. And uh, yeah, I actually didn't play, like didn't play Lineage 2. And uh, I can judge only by, you know, listening to that soundtrack, which I find really, really beautiful. Um, but from my experience, I was thinking about what game I should tell you uh, on this webinar. And I pretty, really, really fast, I recalled uh, one mobile game, um, which is basically really mobile farm, you know, with like growing up food and like having a bakery and all this stuff but there are some monsters also to grow and the game uh, is called my singing monsters and as you can tell from the title it's about singing and um, audio is really a core feature of this game and the main uh, like thing is um, you have to grow monsters basically and they all sing some part of the general melody. And the more monsters you have, um, the more interesting the melody is. And uh, this is so addicting because this melody is so catchy and it's so, it's so like, I don't, can, I can say it's beautiful, but it's like so soothing, you know, and it's a great experience and like, uh, sound design is also really, really neat in this game. And I, I really, I was addicted to this game and I had to abandon it because I spent way too much time in it uh, that I really have to. Um, and yeah, but it wasn't like only me. There are like 50, like um, 80, 80 plus million of people who are like, who love this game. And um, I believe it uh, came out maybe like three to five years ago. So it's kind of like an old one in our really fast world. But this year, like some years later from the release, it actually was um, named um, really uh, best audio uh, on the Webby Award, which is a, a really big thing for games like this. So yeah, um, I will check. Yeah, so here it is. And um, the next thing great audio can do for your game is attract more you know, attention to your project. And this means more 
potential players. And this is purely marketing thing, actually. You know, um, as you could already understand, I'm not a hardcore gamer myself. I'm more like, you know, backseat gamer who is sitting right next to the person who is playing and giving some really, really vital, you know, advice <laughs> about how to fight or something like this. But uh, I do buy sometimes games like from Steam uh, and um, three of them, at least three of them, I bought actually because I heard that they have a great soundtrack. And uh, yeah, because some friends of mine, they posted on the Facebook that, hey guys, this game has an amazing soundtrack, take a listen. And I listened to it and I love it and I bought the game like immediately. The most like the, the most fast uh, time, it was like 15 minutes, you know. I listen to the soundtrack and I okay, oh, okay, I will buy it. And the logic behind it, it's really, really simple. If the game has a great soundtrack, uh, the game can be, you know, bad. And this is not 100% truth because once again, at, at the Reddit, you know, I, I read some, some uh, threads about um, bad, like bad games with a great soundtrack but yeah like i guess it's more an exception and um yeah so it, it can attract more players and i believe you all heard about this to say going to your witcher thing you know and uh, this song is a perfect example of a great great audio marketing move because as you can like notice it's far more popular than the main theme of the Witcher series. And it's not just by an accident, you know, um, like when it came out, it sounded like literally from everywhere. And uh, then it generated so many memes and covers, you know, it was like everywhere. And uh, like, you can imagine how many viewers it brought to the to this series and it wasn't a really like a coincidence you know it didn't happen just somehow by itself it was a well thought out move and really carefully planned and performed one by netflix you know so yeah and i'm being skeptical not so uh, because i don't like it or i don't like this show uh, i'm being like in this tone because not everyone really get it and get the the marketing power and potential audio can have, you know, in certain projects. And uh, yeah, the last thing, it's not the, the last, last thing great audio can do, but it's last major thing to my opinion, is that great soundtracks, they can and should be sold separately from the game. And that just like that, they can bring some extra profit to you. Uh, and it's a great like uh, mean of monetization. And uh, I believe each and every one of you at least once listened to some soundtrack on YouTube music or like on Spotify and like, or other streaming platforms. Uh, and um, the way you can monetize your music is not only streaming platforms or Bandcamp or like even Steam and GOP, you know, as DLCs, but you can also monetize your music, your game music, by selling some uh, physical mediums. And uh, the last one I heard of was uh, the second part of uh, Ori, I guess. And they released the music on uh, vinyl and it had a smashing success. But the, my, my uh, like most beloved <laughs> story is um, the case of mobile puzzle game Two Dots, uh, and it has like otherworldly amazing soundtrack. I I just love it since I don't know, like uh, two thousand fifteen I believe from the release of the game. I love this music, and I'm not the only one again. And uh, I believe yeah, it was released on vinyl because people audience game audience loved it so much and once again it's a mobile game it's an indie mobile game you know 
and uh, to, to now it is reselled, uh, you know, it's on the resales on the internet because people still want to buy it. And it was, I, I believe it was a limited, you know, release. And uh, I actually had a pleasure uh, of interacting with um, Ross Weriner, who is one of two composers slash sound designers who worked on this project. I actually, I had a small interview with him and uh, crossing fingers, so I uh, like in any time soon, I will post it on our website. And um, after like talking to him, I was even more convinced uh, on what makes uh, the difference between this good, uh, like good practical rapper for a game, good audio, as as mentioned in the chat, this background one from the this great music, like sound design or in general, great audio. What makes the difference? And it's pretty simple and obvious once again. Uh, and uh, it's all about emotions. And uh, yeah, you know, emotions is this thing that can bring some depth in your work, in your game. And uh, once the emotions are added to this very equation of good quality, correct implementation, relevance, and specific task, once you add emotions there, it makes great audio. And I understand that now we're entering some kind of strange territory on all of this, but it will all make sense, I, I promise you. And um, how we add emotions it's so easy to, to to say you know just add emotions there like throw them away and you know um the thing is that the author is significant you know in any audio piece like it can be sound design it can be music it can be voiceover and uh the author the person who is behind it behind creation or even you know recording is essential and the author is that thing that make a difference uh, simply because, you know, author, like great specialist, great audio specialist, um, this person doesn't only have like skills that can, uh, that help to create audio because being honest, me like, and any other, like any other person can invest some time, some money, some effort, and gain those skills and create audio whatsoever. But uh, the difference between truly amazing specialists and like any other people that have skills is in uh, um, this part that those people, they have like an ability to transform other things, you know, story, game, narrative, um, emotions, once again, you know, any project into sound, like in general sound. And they do this, you know, just because they feel and hear like the smallest details, they know how to make those small details do the job and how to, to create something like that is so easy to perceive, but it's not so obvious to anyone else. And this is like what we call pure magic, but you know, there is no such thing like magic because magic is just the perfected technology, right motivation and passion. And, um, you know, te perfected technology, it's not only about skills. It's also about some nature feeling of, of uh, profession. And it's not only in it, this equation, it uh, doesn't work only in audio. It works everywhere. As I, as I mentioned, I'm, I'm good with text, but I know how to draw. I, I know the, you know, I have skills to draw something, but I don't really, I never achieve something good in drawing because I don't have this natural vision, you know? And uh, the passion is also in this equation for reason because uh, I talked about this with a, a lot of audio like specialists and they all like in some way or other 
they told me that it's the combination of skills and passion and the right motivation, of course. And yeah, so this makes like like magic and make a great audio. And the thing is to find those people and hire them and uh, let eventually, and this is important, let, let them do their job because they know how to do it. And uh, if you do all of this, you will end up with what, what sounds like this. So we're about to like watch an original clip from, you know, from Red Dead Redemption 2. So people who like stars <laughs> never played in this game and are afraid of spoilers. I really mean it. Please mute my me <laughs> at this moment or skip this part and just believe me that the sound there is emotional. And uh, for those who played this game, it's okay. You know, you know the drill with this. And uh, for those who didn't but not afraid of spoilers, I will give you just a brief context of what is happening here so you can better understand, you know, the, the power the audio has in it. Um, so the, the protagonist of the game, he is really, uh, really sick and he knows it. And uh, he knows that he is in his terminal condition and there is no way like around. And um, he's afraid. He basically, he's scared to leave and he's like in search of his redemption and he's trying to make, make right things so it wouldn't be so scary to leave. And in this scene, he is heading to his last battlefield and to his field of honor. And all of this sounds something like something like that. The many miles we walk. The many things we learn The building of a shrine Only just to burn That's the way So I haven't played the game and <laughs> it is one of those games I haven't even watched in full, you know, but I got, I, I have goosebumps every time I see this scene <laughs> and uh, it makes me so emotional because here it works just as it should. And, you know, because of this, it has four plus million listenings on Spotify and 13 plus millions on YouTube. And this, as I can assume, makes 25 plus million on every streaming platform. And we are not even counting, you know, covers and pirated content. And, uh, you know, this is the magic I was talking about. Because in this scene, it, everything works just as it should. You know, uh, the music perfectly conveys the games and scenes mood and the story of the game and lyrics they they talk about everything that happened in this story and the voice that is singing is just you know on point because it's so relevant to the story and sound design is so neat and it works just as it should and nothing distracts people from you know feeling those emotions that developers wanted to make them feel and uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of magic, but not at all, you know. It's a really well thought out decision. And there are some amazing, amazing, like specialists behind of this. And uh, yeah, Stas, <laughs> did you take a listen or not? Yeah, I've listened to it and I stayed online and I stayed uh, in the stream despite that your suggestions to leave. Uh, by the way, this is the first guest who just suggests to leave the stream <laughs> to, to avoid, to avoid 
but, but anyway, it sounds really, really impressive, and I like the soundtrack. And you know, uh, the words in, in the soundtrack is so relevant to the the right of this man, uh, and uh, I see all this. Um, visual effects and I see everything that's on the screen and it's so so beautiful looking and listening so uh, it's it's this game I think is rather worth to, to, to spend few hours or days and play so yeah uh, you're being optimistic about hours and days because it take it takes weeks and even months <laughs> to, so. to really play it but yeah as I said I, I watched, like, sometimes, occasionally, my boyfriend playing this game. Uh, and as I said, I wasn't too attached to this character. I, I kind of knew what is happening there. But when I saw this scene, you know, for the first time, I cried, really, you know. I was like, how can you play this game? It breaks my heart, you know, this music, it breaks my heart. And really, when I hear it, it all these feelings, they just come back to me, you know? So, and yeah, we, as an agency, we also have like a similar experience like this. And of course, it is less large scale uh, than Red Dead Redemption 2, obviously. But um, why I included it here? Because it's quite illustrative to me. Um, because here, here, uh, here you have like uh, a cover of an album. Uh, the game called uh, Fox Tale is a small indie game. And um, we basically created soundtrack for it. But the, like, the tricky part of this all is that we, like, we weren't first ones to create this. Uh, and um, this game um, comes out like chapter by chapter and um, there for the first chapter it was another person who wrote the soundtrack and it wasn't bad at all and the uh, audience loved it and so when we <laughs> came in um, obviously people like weren't too happy to hear that to hear that the music they love will change and all this stuff. But the developer, he didn't think that mm, music fitted just right, you know, that it uh, trans like, that it like spoke for this story. And the story is about um, the young fox, uh, Leah, who is trying to find the cure for her grandmother, who is really sick. And um, when we released the first chapter with our music, the audience was like divided, you know, because someone loved it right away. Someone were like, oh no, I loved uh, like the previous one better. And it's okay because people, as I said at the beginning of this webinar, people don't like to change their mind and it's okay, it's totally fine. But using our approach of how we create music and that takes into account all the stuff I was talking before, um, we managed to make like this audience love the music. And then they, like two years later, they made us release it like separately from the games game. It wasn't like, you know, our decision, like, well, we, we should release the soundtrack now. There were like, like a lot of requests from players, like guys where I can like listen to it, like apart from game. And so we released it and we are really proud of this work because it's for us, it is like, you know, um, this case that proves that this approach works. You need to just make it really holistic. And uh, in this presentation, I will leave a link so you can take a listen or you can just Google it, you know, right away. And there are some free options to listen to. It's not, a call to buy something for us from us so yeah and um yeah that's it on the perfect perfect part uh and next we'll go into detail of how create such an audio like step by step but for now do you have some questions on this? okay so first of all i want to say hi to my mom and dad <laughs> 
<laughs> who managed to come to this webinar. Uh, and next, I, I see a great question uh, about uh, hearing disabilities, uh, people with hearing disabilities, uh, how we can, um, as audio specialists, uh, like, um, enhance their experience despite their disabilities and that they are tend to use more like mono audio and that's a great great uh question because i think it's more technical one and i will leave it to vlad maybe maybe he will make an appearance on the stream like and tell it say for himself or either way he can uh answer this in the chat because it's more technical one but yeah, Mona, I'm not even going to pretend I understand the technical part of it, but in terms of emotions, you know, if you put the right intention in the music as what, like, quite a few people from audio world told me in my time, if you put the right intention in the music, people either way will feel it, you know, because if you, if you have the, um, the right level of skills, and if there is a right intention, people are gonna hear it. But it's true that you need to find some technical also part to, to resolve this. So if, if there are any questions, please drop them in the chat and we'll have... There is one more question, I guess. Just a second. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. What you do in case uh, the developer's opinion about bad, good, perfect audio is different than yours as a professional. For example, the developer wants something totally different than uh, you can expect in the game. Would you do the developer's demand or would you rather stand behind your direction? Um, it's a great, great question. And uh, <laughs> actually it's really relevant um, because uh, it happens all the time, you know, uh, especially as I told here, not only in Ukraine, but like in our mentality. Uh, sometimes people simply are not educated about like audio enough and it's okay. Uh, and um, when uh, such things happen, uh, happen, we really there are two ways you you either can go with the like uh, developers full or you can like stand your ground and uh, really push your vision and we do both it all depends on their you know on the specific case like for example um i believe two months ago we had like uh, a project where um the developer wasn't like pleased with uh, well, I guess we made two or three um, like versions of uh, sounds, uh, like it was sound effects, and uh, he just wasn't pleased with this. But we have like limited amount of free, you know, uh, iterations we can do. And um, at some point, we understood that this person uh, simply don't uh, have a vision. And we're going to talk about this. If like the client don't have a vision, like a really precise vision of what he want, he or she, you know, or they want to achieve uh, in terms of audio, we as professional can and should, I believe, push our like ideas, you know, but you need to explain like, why this sound will work in terms of this project, you know, uh, and you are really, you're free to do this because you is like the audio specialist after all. But like right now we have a project in the making and uh, we did one uh, iteration uh, like the first one of uh, also sound effects. And uh, once again, the client wasn't too pleased with them, uh, but he really explained why. And although I find these sounds to be like nice, uh, like in terms of how they work, they work with the project, but um, the client's vision were, was different from ours. And he explained it and he has a really precise one. He really wants to like to convey certain ideas through the sound and he explained it to us and we like, okay, it differ, it really differs from 
our first like vision, but it's fine. We can go with with clients flow. So you need to really see if the person understands or uh, like what this person wants to get in the end. So I hope I answered your question. And we have uh, another one in the chat. Do you agree that the sound designer should also have game development skills or do you think that he, she should just take care of sound? Um, it depends. <laughs> Again, <laughs> probably I can start uh, most of my question, uh, most of my answers with it depends. Um, you know, it's always great if you, like here, once again, in Ukraine, um, we have this idea, like developer's idea. And we talked about this, I guess, uh, yeah, this Saturday, we had like the first offline event, first offline conference. It was scary to me, but it was okay. And we had like, uh, what he, like, he moderated a discussion panel on the game audio there. And um, one of the speakers of this panel, uh, she brought up this question, um, this stigma in Ukraine, that, you know, audio person uh, has to do it all. It has, uh, it, he or she <laughs> needs to um, create sound effects, compose music, like implement them, you know, uh, make all this you know all stuff about you know um mixing mastering and all this stuff you know a lot of things that are actually different people should do because uh it will be the best quality but it is always a great great uh skill if you have an idea or like like a, like a certain skills in game development because uh, even you know the implementation part will be easier and more like understandable to you so you can provide your clients more expertise on this because um you know for example once again but he mostly he composed music composes music and uh, he used to be a sound designer as well but now he just occasionally do sound design if he really likes the project but he also gained some skills in implementation not to do this like you know like um like on the project maybe but just to have an idea and expertise in this so he can provide maybe a better feedback you know or all this stuff so answering your question it's good to have those skills but it's not really really important you know it's not vital to have them and uh, I'm also a huge believer in the idea of T-shaped specialists. So you have one, your major skill, and you have some notions in other ones. So, yeah. Um, I guess we're going to start our final part of the webinar. Do you believe when I was, like, you know, when I um, tried to... Um, tell my speech yesterday, I was like, oh, it takes so many time to talk about all the things. And today I'm like, okay, I'm surprised that the final part is already here. Okay. Um, just a second, once more, and adding to the last question. I'm asking this because I'm constantly have in mind the mix and mastering on the game in James High. Mix and mastering dynamic sounds to make sure that what that whatever happens in the game it sounds good. It's yeah. Um, we're going to touch this like in this part, um, but y you have a great point. And uh, yeah, let's start. I will just click on the right screen, which is this one. Here you have it, like the final part of my webinar. Uh, probably the most practical one where we'll talk about five steps to make your game sound good. And once again, uh, these steps are um, based on my experience and our agency's experience um, and some great, you know, cases from the industry as well from experience of certain audio specialists I had pleasure to interact with. So maybe this is not you know the bible of game sound design um but um yeah that's what in what i believe you know so step one 
do your marketing homework. And I'm a marketer, what else you were expecting from me to, 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 to hear. Uh, so um, what I mean by saying this, um, the marketing part is essential because you will need this not only to you know create audio but also you will need this to pitch your game for like uh, to investors or to publishers and you need this to perform certain hr like pr pr and hr as well okay pr activities and uh, you will need it even if you you know delegate the the part of promotion to someone else so i like suggest you to really invest your time in this and uh, create something like you know a marketing kit but yeah it sounds really scary but it's um, simple enough i believe so uh you will need to create something like um like a document you know in which you need to specify certain things and if you are if you are like an audio specialist this is the questions you better ask your clients because this will give you like a really structured idea of what this project is truly is like about and uh, yeah the first thing you need to mention in this document is that um what your game is about basically and um, what are like its features setting story like characters and you know the general big idea behind it and next you need to understand what makes your different you different from your competitors and here you need to really study you know the market and your competitors because um, as from my experience, I can tell you when you come up with an idea, oh, okay, this like feature or this mechanic or like, I don't know, this thing is what truly will make us different. Like most often it's not the case because when you study up, you know, the market and your competitors, you can easily uh, like find out that someone else is already doing this and it's okay. The, like, uh, it's the best that you know this and then you can really dig into this and uh, understand what truly makes you different um, then you need to understand who your target audience is and here uh, I really really want to you to make uh, to you know to think outside this template of gender plus age and I had like a brief discussion like few days ago with um, with the producer of uh, hyper casual games and he told me that um, you know when you make in especially no other data um, like only you know this gender plus age because the audience is really really wide but I understand this. Lana, I should warn you that we had a slight um, connection uh, problems. And can you please uh -huh. start with this uh, hyper casual man that you met okay. on the event, please? Okay. Okay. So yeah, uh, as I uh, said like before, uh, this producer of hyper casual games, he told me that in um, like most often, the only data data uh, they have on the audience is this gender passage because the audience is too wide. But what I uh, asked him and he had to agree is that the best way um, to target on the audience is by the problems or pains this audience has. And then you can provide, you know, solutions for their problems or pains and this is the best how you can target on people um like for example if you're making like with him we discuss some you know asmrish game um so uh, like this game ha can have like multiple purposes but when you like um say that you know this game is for people who have like trouble falling asleep so this will provide a certain like sound design to it or this is a game to you know 
to queue sometime in the, I don't know, in the transport. This will be another type of sound design if you, if you understand what I'm trying to say here. And um, what else you need to mention in such marketing document is what a player should experience from your game. And this is kind of connected with what I told you like just a few seconds ago. But uh, here you need to also include, you know, your mission, your like big mission with your game. Um, it's not like, you know, it's not, it's not essential if you're doing some like small really projects that will last for a few weeks but if you are creating something big like big in your perception of it you need to mention what mission is behind your project what emotions or feelings or something else players should experience from your game because this information is vital for an audio people to catch it and transform it into the sound as and this will bring the depth to your like music or sound uh, or voiceovers. And this will catch the player's attention as I showed you like before in this presentation. And always remember to add some kind of visuals, you know, arts or I don't know, videos, maybe, you know, even a playable build will be fine. And there were, there was like a question in the very beginning on, of the webinar when it is better to start like creating developing audio when you have the answers on those questions i'm showing you right now because if you uh start to develop audio prior to having this all oh, these answers and having like any any visual like and the only one picture can can be okay you know for the start if you don't have anything of it it's not great to start creating audio because in this case it will work in only like exceptional cases the really exceptional cases it can work but mm, i don't know a lot of you know uh, wonderful cases that started like this most often if uh, audio um like audio development part starts prior to having all this information, um, uh, those projects had to redo the whole or partly, you know, audio in the process. So, yeah. Uh, next step is to do your audio homework. And this is game audio webinar. You know, this was coming, you know, and, um, yeah, what I mean by do your audio homework, there are also some smaller steps in this huge step. And this is, I believe, the bigger, the biggest one. Um, first of all, decide on the tasks because you need to understand which tasks the overall audio and each sound or track should, should perform in your project. Uh, because as I told you again previously, uh, audio can reflect the game setting, provide information to a player, set the atmosphere and mood, describe the character, make a game memorizable and build up the right association. You need to decide what is the highest priority you have, like, you know, for, for the task and uh, the lowest certain, you know, um, tracks can be linked to one, like setting and certain can be linked to another. So the possibility are like, endless here um, but you need to decide like at least on the overall audio but it's the best if you know precisely what tr like which track should perform which task and maybe not each sound maybe you know packs of sound but uh in our practice we divide you know when we look th through the technical task when we look through it we understand how we can you know uh put some sounds in some sort of packs and decide which task they will perform. So yeah, well, when you decided on the tasks, you need to put all this information somewhere and technical task is the perfect place for it. Um, yeah, there you need to really put all the audio elements you need to create for your project and then 
uh, put the information about the tasks they need to perform or the technical information, you know, about uh, duration or, you know, loops and something, something else. Like you need to also put uh, like to which uh, other game elements this uh, audio assets are linked to. So yeah, it's uh, the most important document actually. And uh, we have uh, a template like proven by time, our own template of technical task. It really makes uh, like everything easier for us. So if you want, so, uh, we can include this in also in the mail that Stan will send you after this webinar. If you are interested, please put some symbol or just in the uh, symbol in the in the chat or just a plus, you know, so we know that you are interested in it. Okay, uh, moving on. What else uh, should be on a technical task is like reference, like some references, because um, those things like <laughs> back in the days when we were younger, <laughs> like we thought that, ah, we don't need references. They limit us, you know, they don't help us with our creativity. They, <laughs> they put boundaries on our creativity. And now I like, as like years come by, I can say that references are important. There are exceptions. Once again, it's not a, like a, one thing, like, one and only rule, but like most often references are like essential because they uh, help to stay on the same page, you know, with the developer, like performer and client, they are on the same page. They do understand that they have the same vision and uh, uh, it's just simple things and speed things up sometimes. Mm, and uh, for developers, what I want to recommend is to don't be afraid to ask an audio expert to do this like this thing together to pick up some reference together and for all of audio people out there i recommend you to suggest that to the client because when we uh, started to do this like together with our clients it really helps to to break the ice first of all and then to speed this creative work process up you know and for developers, what you need to think about while picking those references, you need to think about, first of all, your personal preferences. And uh, I want to specify on this because um, you, is, like, the person, you are the person who knows your project like the best. And you already um, have probably, you already have some music or sound associations in your head. And you just need to get them out of your head and, you know, let the world know. But here the trick is to stay, you know, objective. Because uh, if you go totally subjective here, relying only on your personal preferences without uh, remembering, remem sorry, remembering about your project, uh, it will do like more like bad than good. Uh, for example, if you a huge fan of a black metal, you shouldn't uh, use this as a reference if you are creating a match tree unicorn game, as if you understand what I, I'm trying to say. Uh, the next thing you need to think about while uh, picking those references, you need to um, compare the references theme, mood, and atmosphere with your own project. Um, so because some references are great, but if they are not even closely, you know, connected with your project, they probably will be for nothing. And um, the last thing I recommend you to think about is that does the reference match the general emotion of your game? Uh, once again, for like, deep projects this is important because <laughs> if you pick the soundtrack of from i i don't know silent hill 2 as a reference for your fun pixel game it will be not so logical so while once you pick up those references you need to analyze them it's an extra step but this as we find this we find this really uh, helpful with our clients because um, 
you know, people not, not, not all people know about this, you know, what they need to should, uh, they need to think about while picking references. But when we ask them to analyze those references, maybe together, maybe they do this by themselves, this really helps in the communication. Because um, when people started to think about why those references work so good in a particular case, and what exactly put their attention in this experience, and the most important, uh, how and like uh, in general, can this reference be adapted in, in the specific project? This helps to, you know, to get on this same page with the client. So take a note of this. And well, once you picked those references, you need to put them in the technical task, though, so they could be nice and safe there. And the last thing you need to do while doing your like audio homework is um, is to set the quality bar. Um, what I'm trying to say here is that you need to understand what quality of audio you are willing to get in the end, like in the end of the project. Uh, and uh, here I'm talking mostly about, um, you know, sound, you know, mixing, mastering, arrangement, all this stuff. Um, why this is important? We actually added this to our, like, approach not so long ago, I guess, like, maybe a year or a year and a half ago. Uh, and it was so obvious. We were like, why didn't we add, add this, like, sooner? Because this helps a lot. Um, because if client uh, chooses something like, you know, um, a track with, you know, a live orchestra and, you know, this uh, really neat arrangement, but a huge, huge, like, uh, amount of uh, instruments and, you know, it's just so epic and sounds, like, exceptional uh, and um, this client wants to hear, like, this specific sound in the end, you can um, really um argue this like discuss this because um uh, sometimes but in, often it costs more like than a track uh composed using like uh, only virtual instruments you know and uh, when you set the quality bar you can better understand whether you are going to to work with the specific performer or client because you can understand um the client can understand and you can understand whether you can perform on this quality level or not. And this um, helps to escape, you know, any possible misunderstanding in the end. So, yeah. And this was the last step in our step to um, do your audio homework. And now heading to the step three, choose the right performer. And... Uh, Remember, I, I was talking how important and essential it is. It is essential to find the right performer um, because it either, can, it either can be like an okay level performer or like a great, great specialist. Um, you need to understand what needs you have like, in your, like for your project and to find the person that matches them, matches them. And while uh, choosing the performer, like choose your fighter, you, you need to rely on something more than just the price. Yes, this is important to, you know, to stay in the budget, but you need to also rely on portfolio, portfolio of the performer. Um, it's better, it's like the best, I believe, if the performer already worked in the same style or genre as your game, but it's not, you know, um, the cornerstone. Because um, if you take a listen to, uh, you know, the reel of best works and audio people tend to have those reels, if not, you can just ask them to, you know, to send you the best works. And if you listen to them, you need just to focus on uh, those uh, pieces that, um, have the same maybe you know mood or atmosphere as you willing to uh, to gain in, in, like in the end. 
uh, then you need to rely on the previous client's testimonials and or um, reviews from actual listeners about this precise performer work. Um, client's testimonials will tell you about, you know, um, how the process is going, will be going with this person, how they uh, tend to do their work and you will like get a better idea how to, you know, to communicate with this performer or like with this team, you will understand uh, those things. And um, the reviews from actual listeners, um, sometimes uh, you can't read them and it's okay, but if you can find those, it will be perfect because you will see how audience perceive this precise like a performer work. Does it work for the audience or not? Um, Next thing you need to rely on while uh, choosing the performer, you need to rely his, her or their approach to work. Because <laughs> if someone is willing to do the job, you know, for yesterday, like in, in hours without, you know, even asking an additional questions and uh, like for free and without signing some papers and uh, you know just like give me the job give me the job give me the job i <laughs> i don't recommend you to to start working with those people they can be great people i i agree but uh, when this is all in the hurry or uh, like you know this i need the job whatsoever sometimes they tend to do like the job not so you know carefully um carefully and uh, the last thing you need to understand while choosing the performer is um, like whether this performer can do the job on that like level of quality of which we talked previously. And this you can really understand like from the portfolio. Once again, you can understand this from the communication, like <laughs> straight, you know, asking, can you do th this type of work or not? And uh, the best way, actually it's a test task. So yeah, if you, if you can. Um, like provide the test task, uh, it will be great for, for both of you, I believe. Uh, step four, evaluate the result. Once you've done all those first three steps, so you created a marketing document, you created an audio document, which is technical task with all those, um, like those bits of information you have, and then you choose, uh, choose like the right performer, you just need to like throw things <laughs> at this person or a team and uh, then you can do like other job or you have and those people will do the thing they will create like audio concept and going from this concept they will create like audio assets and then it's again it's your turn to do something you need to evaluate the result and why this i included this in here because this is important like i can't say how much and um here you will once again need all this database that you combined on the pre-production stage because when you get like maybe it's a full game or it's a part like a part with sounds or music voiceovers whatsoever and uh, you need to take like I listen to it and you need to listen carefully not just you know on the go like okay aha uh -huh, I see like no uh, you need to sit down and grab your team or send it to your focus group it's it's like the best um, and you need to listen carefully and then you need to just ask some questions like you need to ask yourself um, do the test that we originally said perform in the right way uh, does everything correspond to the setting, the narrative, and the target audience? And does the audio evoke the right emotions and moods? And if everything works just fine, it's great. Um, you know, uh, you did a great job, your performer did a great job, and you are all like great. But sometimes um, some, something can be off and it's okay, it's a process. Um, in this case, you need to really like take another listen and 
really go deep in this you need to understand what makes you feel that something is off you know and you need to give a constructive feedback on this to make those things work uh, and here you need rely on the that database you compiled because um, without it you can go subjective and it's it's not great it's it's not great believe me you need to really define what sounds off to you and explain why so you can get like so you can give a clear idea to the performer how to you know how to fix those things like for example you know or it's like you can say something like this you know in this scene our character he's heading to the to the hospital for example and the music needs to be really intense here and you need to enhance this experience with sound design and yeah you have those sounds uh they may be too harsh but i don't understand but the music is kind of kind of slow here you need to speed things up it's it's not a, like you know the best feedback you can give but your feedback mm, shouldn't be the best it should give a, an idea for audio like people what what to do with this and please if you don't know like audio terminology it's okay uh, we don't ex expect you to know these things you can um explain what how you how you feel about the piece we created and what makes you feel this way so yeah and always remember about your players because they they define our success think about what player should feel and not just just you know on you, yourself um the last step of how to make your game sound good and we talked about this before but now i will go deeper on this properly implement the audio into the game um uh, i can't stop saying how important this is and there was a person in the chat uh, that's the who said that um, he or she i don't i don't know um can stop to think about the general mix of how it will be sound uh, how it will sound in the game and it's great because if you do if you forget about this step if you forget about the implementation step oh all the rest audio work will be for nothing like truly we ha we had this painful experience and it's it's awful and i i i hope that no one of you will have to experience this thing because uh we worked on some project like for months um like we did some music part but mostly we did like sound design part and it was like not huge we are talking about here like 100 to 200 sound effects like uh kind of big and um, it was great the client were was happy and we asked for you know a test build before they release so we can take a listen to a game and understand if everything is configured right in there because they didn't ask us to implement you know the audio in there and uh they they didn't uh provide us with the build because they were in a hurry and i understand this but when um the game went, went live <laughs> and we downloaded this uh i i can't say how frustrated i was everything sound just awful because you know they just throw the assets in and they never even like configure the loudness balance the frequencies balance i'm not even talking about you know the transitions between sounds of like various um, uh, events you know in the game and it's so awful to see all your work all your hard work go like like for nothing because players don't know about how many effort you put into this they hear the end result and if the end result is not configured right um like it's a waste of money you know and uh, yeah once again i hugely recommend to hire the person who can implement audio into the project 
the person who does this for a living, especially if you have like a complex project, like, you know, a 3D multiplayer or something, there need to be like uh, some audio system created into the game, like developed and then implemented. But if you have not so complex project, you can do this even by yourself, you know, you just need to remember about this bare minimum that you can hear on, uh, that you can see on the screen and you will be like, the game will be okay. So always remember how your players will hear it. Uh, so I believe this is pretty much it on the, um, like, uh, on the main part of the webinar. I um, will just show you a quick some some quick examples um, and uh, yeah um, sometimes we have people that want just an okay level audio and this is totally fine I'm not you know a snob that tells not all audio needs to be only great you know because I love my work but I understand that you know um, I love my job but I understand that there are various situations where the okay level audio will do the thing like for example you know commercials um i hate to say this as a marketer but sometimes uh you can't afford you know the greatest audio in those commercials because there are simply like thousands of them like each week and you can't invest those money you take by you know by number not by quality and in this in, in situations like this, I recommend to do at least okay level audio, at least, because bad audio will still ruin everything. Bad audio won't let you get away with this, you know, but for create an okay level audio, and please, all my audio people, <laughs> close your ears for this moment, because and don't hate me for saying this, you can do this yourself. You can, you can do, you can pick some like ready-made assets, but just choose them wisely and then configure, you know, in the video or in the project and you will be okay. Many, many, many indie teams make uh, games sound okay with this approach and it's great. Uh, or if you don't have like time, you can um, hire someone like maybe like a newbie or like, uh, like people who create audio, you know, as a hobby, but they know how to, you know, um, produce it on okay level and how do this all, you know, um, music choosing job, you know, music and sound choosing job. And uh, just a quick example, uh, here's, you will see, you know, um, a commercial of a uh, state of survival mobile uh, game, uh, which, commercials i i can't stand uh, frequent uh, like honestly i uh, can't stand them because they don't in such poor like way but uh we redid this audio for like less than one hour and less than 100 back bucks and you know you can do this even cheaper i believe and um here we'll take a listen. So uh, this was an original commercial. We saw this on YouTube <laughs> and yeah. So, and now I will show you how we redid the audio like in it. Of survival for now. So, um, as you can clearly hear, the second version is not perfect and it's okay because we um, didn't put much effort in it. Some uh, assets were like free, even free to use, you know, but 
this <laughs> sounds at least listenable you know and if you can do this like this fast with this little money it's better than do this stuff as state of survival did like <laughs> like originally so um yeah i <laughs> yeah i hate this as well <laughs> yeah i can i can agree on this um and now i will show you one other like the last uh, the last example and i will start by saying that okay level like audio <laughs> won't work for the big idea because yeah it will work for some you know some uh, ads like like this uh, you, it will work for some projects that are done like you know like in two weeks and not it, there is nothing bad about this so um but if you have this big idea and you want to make a difference uh you need tailor-made you know music and sound design because i otherwise you won't you know speak to your players you won't tell them your story you won't tell you with them about your idea they won't feel it and uh here's an example this um this example isn't um from game dev because uh this is a video like uh also a, like commercial um but first of all <laughs> it's done on uh on the unreal engine so it's kind of connected to game dev um but um what i'm trying to say here that of course there is a difference um, between like music for like films and videos and game music for example but uh what comes uh, to um, like to give like those emotions and ideas it works kind of the same so i will show you a uh, short story behind this project so i will show you the initial initial version of this video this video was um produced by the team of ukrainian burners um that will hopefully like uh go to the next uh next year's burning man festival and will build their installation there and this is video about their installation basically to show uh all other people what their installation is about and um they have an amazing amazing idea uh behind it but uh they didn't have like much time uh to produce it so they firstly they uh used initially they used the ready made like the track from their friend so uh and it sounded like this i won't show you the full video i will show you like you know the combination of it so here you have it like from here maybe but I will leave the link for the full video so you can check it later if you want. Yes, you got the idea. Uh, so, what happened here is that the track isn't bad, you know, at all. It's it's okay. Uh, maybe as a separate piece of art, it's great. Um, but in terms of the video, and the producer thought uh, this also. Um, in terms of this video, it doesn't tell the story behind you know this installation this art installation and uh, it doesn't you know evoke the right emotions and it was kind of putting people to, like to sleep for me I, I i i can't this music makes me like feel sleepy and it's not the emotion you want from this video because uh this installation is about people 
who are like struggling, who are going against the flow, who are trying to set themselves free and who fight for like their ideas and each and every day. And this music doesn't like uh, talk about this. I, I hit the mic. So yeah, and what we did, you will see like in the second, I will show you. Um, Oh, oh, this time also from the combination, I won't show you the whole promo, but just to give you an idea, just a second, I will mute myself. is the final version it's not also like perfect 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 and maybe now we'll we would done this maybe in uh, some slightly other way but we had like 12 to 15 hours to to make this and uh, yeah we at least we try to tell that story and as uh, as far as we know from uh, our clients uh, their audience love this and it's all that they needed and all what we needed and for such you know a quick work it it really does the job and I hope that you could hear the difference and I hope <laughs> that at least our version didn't put you uh, like into a sleeping mode and uh, yeah I generally I hope that this webinar was helpful for you and maybe give you some inspiration. And I want to end it with this quote that I find in some game dev book. And uh, the quote is that, the good sound won't make a bad game good, but it can make a good game excellent. And I really want that more people know about this. And I hope that you will have a great projects and you will have an opportunity to search for right sound, experiment a lot, and uh, yeah, I hope that you will have the best experience ever. And that's it. And I'm waiting for your questions. I uh, you see some uh, social links there in the uh, I will the duplicate slide. them. I'd yeah, thank you, Stan. And yeah, just yeah. to say that we try to uh, talk a lot about game audio as well as audio branding. We share our experience, we share our work life, so you are all very welcomed there. And I know that some of you, <laughs> we met each other on the socials, and I really appreciate that you came to my webinar. So, yeah, thank you. I will read uh, the question now. Okay, um, and don't forget that uh, right now you can ask questions to our speaker, and please... Um, don't forget that we will give a giveaway to the best question to our speaker and one year of GDB network. And um, if the developer's internal policy doesn't allow to share you the source code for the implementation and the problems, technical difficulties, and on the other side, you know that the developer doesn't have a good technical person in his team for the implementation or the audio may fail in the engine, uh, even if your produced sounds are very good or perfect, would you join this cooperation? Um, it's a good question, once again. Um, 
here we don't don't tend to have those problems because uh, we do sign uh, NDAs like quite often, so they can share those information with us because yeah, it's legally okay. Um, but um, what we try to do in those uh, like moments, we try to like imagine how everything will sound in the game and do like you know the mix <laughs> on our side it's not perfect it's it's definitely not a perfect solution but we try to you know, uh, to do you know at least like a loudness balance on other side so we have either the build you know we we have a gameplay video and then we just configure you know the loudness prior to send sounds to the clients but we do discuss this beforehand because uh, we don't want to have them like surprised you know with this it's not a perfect uh, you know way to solve these things and um that's why we always even after release you know even after our job is over we uh, check the final you know um the way how the game sounds uh you know in in the release and we do the bug list you know and then we provide it to developers and like most of the time uh they try to fix those things because they are interested <laughs> in their game sounding okay you know um sometimes um sometimes as I, as i mentioned we had those um developers who didn't like do this part because they didn't care and uh, now we try not to cooperate with people who don't care because um you know nothing good will come of this but uh i know other people who don't care either you know and do things because of money or because of i don't know because they, they need to do something and i don't judge it at all because everyone has like different approaches to the work but yeah what we do we trying to like at least balance out you know sounds on our part as like as much as we can and then we listen all all the work and uh, create like a bug list or a list of recommendations you know so yeah and even not technical really tech people can perform those recommendations and at least the game can sound better. Next. Um, <laughs> uh, this is not for me. Oh, if the developers, ah, oh, it's the same question. And uh, next, um, what is your opinion on the exclusive songs you produce for someone? Is it okay to work on, for hire and let the game developer own the song song? Also, a great, great question. Um, so, uh, uh, and actually this question, um, was brought up on the game conference I mentioned before on the panel discussion about game audio, um, and our, um, lawyer who, who is like the best, she explained to everyone different, the difference be be between work for hire and exclusive and, uh, if uh, anyone like if someone doesn't know work for hire it's mainly like um in united states it's really really common here in europe somewhat like common uh, but somewhere like in ukraine <laughs> like people don't know about this and work for hire means that um from the moment that you created something it like it's uh, the property like full property of the client um what we try to do we try to um we try to keep a lot of rights for ourselves uh and not to you know we sell this stuff or like you're saying songs like um uh, it can be tracks uh for okay i will start over for sound effects and voiceovers we like give all the property rights to our clients because we are not interested to put those uh, things in other projects and they will like most uh, uh, 
uh, in most time times they won't do the job in those projects in other projects uh, except for the one precise for which we created those assets but for music we try to keep some property rights to ourselves um, simply because this music we, simply because we can publish this music not resell this for someone else or for some other projects not to like to do the stuff not to put this on libraries on something like this but we as i showed you an example we want to release this music um separately from game and uh, we have like always we agree with we agree those things with clients and we uh, propose them to have you know like a share from those listenings and those maybe you know um, purchases of soundtrack because it, it's fair you know your music wouldn't be a popular no one will would like um, listen to it if it wasn't for that game project but we tend to keep this right to publish to publish the music to release music separately uh, because most of game developers don't know about this or they don't simply have time to do this. Uh, and we have, you know, the connection with distributors and we can really do this like on our, on our part. But sometimes um, uh, some uh, game producers, like game developers, they want only exclusive rights, like, uh, you know, on property rights on the music you created. And it's also okay if they explain why. They don't need to explain, but we like where, when we know exactly why we need to transfer all those rights. And sometimes uh, this is simply because they want to uh, sell the project or, you know, um, sell the project to investor or to publisher and uh, the project would cost less if uh, they don't have all this exclusive rights and it's okay. And in these cases, we see if we are ready to, you know, to sell it uh, for some amount of money, because if you sell this like this, you, it should uh, cost more. But uh, sometimes if there is no possibility, we just see uh, how much we're interested, interested in this project and then we make a decision from there. I hope I answered your question. Um, Next, uh, yeah. What can you say, for example, about the many composers and musicians in new grounds who are willing to work for food and the place in the captions? Wow, you guys have this also, like in Ukraine, <laughs> like not only Ukraine, in Russian speaking community. Um, now we have more audio people than there are projects for them. At least, and this is uh, the what like many audio people think. And they uh, do the most awful thing that they could like possibly do. They start to like propose to, for, to work for free or for food or for nothing, you know, just to get a project, just to make the, their way into titles, you know. And um, yeah, and most of them uh, really good. I, I, I agree on this. Uh, and uh, I, I never doubted this because I listen to their works and they're really, really great like specialists, but they um, do a bad favor for everyone on this market because they educate clients that this work is not valuable because when you pay like really, really small amounts for something like, um, if you have a big budget and you pay a small, really small amount, you won't value this. If you have a small budget budget, and you pay like a small amount of money, but it makes a big part of your budget, it's valuable. So um, people need to really look into clients and how valuable their work would be for them. Because if you do this for free, for food, for caption, First of all, you will ruin the market. Second of all, um, you will ruin your career, like in one way or other. And I really be believe it because if you work for free, everyone will know that you work for free. And for 
years, you will need to change this perception of you on the market. And then you will have like a really fall down because people will be like, why you want money for your work? Because you work for free. Everyone knows it. And yeah, I may be being some kind of uh, cynical here, but every work should have payment for it. And sometimes it's not only because uh, only in terms of money, um, you need to have something valuable for your work. This will make your work valuable. That's that's it. Sometimes, yeah, it's like like some promotion of you or you know some recommendation for other people to ask money. But I do believe that you have to ask for at least small amounts of money. So that's it. Yeah. Uh, follow up on working for free and evaluating your skills. What do you, th do you think about working for a percentage of the game? Uh, great idea for me. Uh, uh, yeah, actually, uh, we have an experience and um, what helps us to stay indie friendly and, you know, to do some like money, you know, to gain some money we often like not often but we have this like opportunity for indie teams uh to pay like a small amount because if you don't gain any money like the months you've created something that that you will starve for this month it's okay to, like, to it's okay to ask for money but the percentage is good because but what we do when someone uh offers us a percentage like a revenue share we really look into the project because if there is different situation. If it's a project with, you know, all the things I told you about today, like a project with marketing kit and the person or the team exactly knows what they will do step by step, how they will publish their game or how they will um, like uh, find investors or will them invest they buy by themselves or it will be like a Kickstarter campaign or something. When the people have like a strict like plan, solid plan of what, what they're going to do and they understand what project needs more agree on a revenue share like for, for our work. But if there is a person or a team coming to you and like uh, so we have this project. Yeah, I will I will continue from, from the last part of it. So if there is an uncertainty, you know, in people, in uh, how people uh, pre-plan to like uh, conduct their pro project, how they plan to do this. If there is an uncertainty, we will most like we we won't agree on the revenue share because there are really really slight chances they will gain those money. There is still a chance that they will blow the the market and they will have millions, but. Like, okay, shame on us, but uh, we won't take those risks. But the revenue share is a great practice. If you have all the papers signed and you have a great uh, understanding between you and the client, it works. But you need to always understand that this is a risk and uh, there is a possibility, always a possibility to gain nothing. But we do have some success stories and we have some not really good ones, but we always understand that, yeah, there is a chance that you will gain nothing. At least you will always, what you will gain first, sure, it's your portfolio case. And uh, if you want to, if you believe in the project and you are ready to take this risk and you ready to gain nothing, uh, nothing can stop you from going into this option of revenue share. So, yeah. That's my oh, uh, thank you for your speech. It was really so amazing. And thank you for answering the questions. Uh, people are on the top of uh, the curiosity about the best question. And uh, you have to scroll up your yeah. chat and try to get uh, the best question of your choice. So I we will just. I will just um, finish on this one. Uh, that, that person uh, is the one who hires people from new grounds for my games. Uh, yeah, uh, just a quick recommendation for you. Uh, 
you need to really take into account all those stuff I, I was talking today. You need to really evaluate um, uh, the person's skills and the person's motivation, why this person wants to work with you. And um, this will help you. And at least, yeah, you, you always can rely on the portfolio, on reviews, on, uh, you know, the quality level and uh, all this stuff. You need to understand that you match, you truly match with those people. And if someone like, I will do this, like, in three hours and free, it will, like, uh, really, it can, it can spoil your game, like, uh, product. But uh, there are exceptions, and I wish you only the best of luck to, to, to find a really great team for, for your project.